So over the last month, I've been working on my own application. It's called Freight Forum, and basically it's a leads application. Uh, people can post leads on here. Uh, basically, shippers who are you know have some shipments and they need to send it to the other side of the world, they can click, um, for example, here click to get an S LCO quote, and they can post information about their shipment here, and then possibly some freight forwarders will be in contact with them uh, with a quotation on their shipment. Uh, there's different kinds of shipments. There's uh, FCL, which means full container load. We have less than container load. We have air freight. Uh, so there's different kinds of leads that can be posted here. Now, Freight Forum is one implementation of my leads application. There's also another application, uh, sorry, another implementation, which is about recycling leads. And this site is a little bit different. Um, it's more of a marketplace feel. Um, you can post buying leads and selling leads. So, for example, if you want to buy metal, you can click this Buy Metal button and post your buying lead. Uh, you can also post a selling lead. So these uh, two different sites are actually quite different. You're posting totally different leads. Um, the content is all different. They're going to have totally different sidebars, different lead types. And also their functionality is quite similar, but also has some differences as well. Now, actually, both of these sites are working quite well right now. All the tests are passing for them. Um, but I'm really not happy with the back-end code for this. And I'm not really happy with the front end either. So I'm actually going to do a version 2 of this leads application and I'm going to rewrite everything. So basically the problem that I ran into uh, the first time around coding this application had to do with architecture. So even though it's all working well, I'm really not happy with how, um, how it's architected. It's, it's gotten quite messy. Um, so I've done quite a bit of research lately on Laravel architecture and on solid principles and um, things like um, single responsibilities and uh, separation of concerns. So I'm going to have another go at this application and in this series we're going to talk about Laravel architecture and there's a lot of people out there who are really experts in architecture. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert but I have picked up a few things um, over the last month and I'm gonna have another go at this and hopefully um, you know by watching me go through this process you can also get some ideas for architecture within your own Laravel applications so basically the main premise uh, behind this leads application is that we can create any number of these leads applications whether it's to do with logistics or recycling or anything else, maybe like buying and selling precious metals or jewelry or anything like that and it's all going to run off a single application. It's all going to run off a single Laravel installation. So the way this is going to work is it's all going to depend on uh, what is in the URL string right here. So it is going to parse this URL string and we are going to know basically from the domain name uh, what uh, what application we're dealing with, whether it's freight or recycling. And then we can also parse the URL segments. For example, here you'll see um, we have metal slash sell. So from the first seg segment, we can see uh, we need to be on the metal page here. And we can go to electronics. We know um, we're on the uh, electronics section here. And if we go to the second URL seg segment, we can see, well, should we, we be showing the selling leads or the buying leads? Um, on this page. The same goes with the um, freight application. Basically depending on the first URL segment here we can know uh, which leads are we supposed to be showing air freight leads, bulk leads. And this is all going to be done uh, dynamically. So what we're going to talk about in this first video is how we can add bootstrap code um, to our application. So as you can see some of the bootstrap code I need to add is I need to determine what is the application I'm dealing with so let's go over to the code here and there's a few different places that we can add um, bootstrap code to Laravel. Um, for example, there's the start.php file. Uh, this is loaded very early um, within you know, Laravel's uh, script execution. There's also um, global.php. You know, we could add our bootstrap code in here. We could add it within start.php. But what you'll find is if you add it to these places, um, you know, your bootstrap code can be more and more. And um, 
basically it can get really messy in here. First of all, there's already a bunch of code in here. And once we add our own, it's just going to become even more messy. Now, another place that we can add Bootstrap code is within a, within a service provider. And that's the route I've chose to do um, this time around doing this application. So I'm going to show you how to create your own custom service provider in this application. And we're going to add our Bootstrap code to it. And we're also going to learn about how to bind things to the IOC container um, while we go through this process. Now, one thing I want to mention um, while I'm on this start.php file here is you will see um, we have this uh, basically this global app variable being declared at the bottom here. This app variable here, um, this is the IOC container. So all of the different parts of Laravel um, are bound to this um, basically this app variable right here, which is which is like a massive array of all the different parts. Um, so you could there will be something like request and there will be there's a lot of other ones queue so this app is um, it's a big array of all the different parts of Laravel and also when you um, install packages from other people to enhance your application they will also be binding to this um, this app variable right here and we're also going to do that um, in this video so the first thing I'll do is show you how we can add our own service provider into Laravel now, where I've chose to place uh, my own service provider, uh, what I've done is I've created my own custom uh, directory here to you know to hold my own uh, domain logic, and it's called leads. So within the app folder, I have a folder called leads, and you can call this whatever you want. You can call it your business name, you can call it um, a nickname that you've given your application. So you know just something short and sweet right here. And then within that, I've created a providers folder. And inside this providers folder, I'm going to hold uh, all of my custom service providers. Now, by default, um, this folder we've created won't be included in Laravel. So we need to instruct it um, how to include our own folder and everything that's within it. So we can go to our composer.json file. And you'll see what I've added to this so far. Um, uh, within the autoload object here, I've added a files array. So within the files, um, I've added my helpers file, so app slash helpers.php. Um, I recommend you also uh, do the same and have your own helpers file. And below that, uh, we are going to use PSR for auto loading to load in our own uh, domain directory here. So you'll see I have PSR-4, and this one is set to an object, so pay attention to this difference. Files is set to an array, but PSR4 is set to an object. And then within here, uh, I have the name of my folder, uh, leads. And then after that, just put backslash, backslash, and then set that to app slash leads, or whatever the path is to your folder. Once that's done, you're going to want to go over to your config um, app.php file. So if you open up your config folder, app.php, and then scroll down to providers here and at the bottom you're going to want to add your own service provider so you'll see I've given the, um, the full path right here leads providers and lead service provider so after you follow these steps your service provider will be included um, within your application so we can go over to um, our service provider now at the top of it I have the namespace now remember, because we use PSR for auto loading, this has to be, uh, you know, in a very specific fashion. Leads providers, it basically matches up with the folders. So we have leads slash providers. So it needs to follow that convention. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in Laravel service provider, which we are going to extend. So you, after that, you'll put use uh, illuminate slash support slash service provider. So you can call your service provider whatever you want. Um, I've chose to call mine lead service provider and we're going to extend the service provider. So basically the whole point of this um, of our service provider is what happens within the register method here. So by default Laravel is going to call your register method right here. Um, so this is where you're going to do the binding to the IOC container. The I, basically, the IOC container and that app variable are the same thing. Um, so you'll notice that we have access to that 
to the IOC container right here within this app. Now the reason we have access to um, the IOC container right here is because we're extending service provider and if we go over to service provider here you'll see at the top it has this protected app property and then within the constructor here um, basically the IOC container was being passed in through the constructor here and then it's being set as a protected property of this abstract class. So once we extend um, this abstract class, uh, we will have access. We'll have access to that variable um, within our own class. Now, there's different ways that you can bind um, to the IOC container. Um, I've chose to use Singleton here, so I'm binding my array or object or whatever I want to bind in there. I'm binding it as a singleton. You can also use bind. Uh, I believe there's also bind shared. But basically, because what I want to bind to it, um, the, you know, the content of this object is not going to change throughout the execution of the program, um, I may as well bind it as a singleton. So no matter how many times um, what, I'm, you know, what I'm binding is accessed, and that could be accessible with at make and then passing in leads, so matter, no matter how many times this is accessed, it's always going to use the same instance, basically the first instance that was created um, because it's being bound as a singleton. And I think that should be a little bit more efficient way because we don't, we don't need to recreate this object every time that we call at make. I'm just setting some basic um, static information in there. So I'm going to bind it as a singleton. So let's go to the first thing that's happening in this register method. The first thing I'm doing is I'm getting the app name because I want to know uh, what is my app name. Is it freight? Is it recycling? Is it something else? So we're going to determine that um, in this first method. So within this get, get app name function, basically all I want to do is I want to parse a request uh, to my application. I don't know what it's going to be. It could be freightform.com. It could be uh, recyclingleads.com. So what I need to do is I need to parse the HTTP host, and I need to return that. So um, you know we could uh, we could access it like this more simply, uh, part of the global server array. But the reason why I've chosen to do it this way is just to show you that um, you can see something here that's been bound to the IOC container by Laravel by default, which is this request. Um, the request array right here. So that um, that could be accessed to get the HTTP host. You could also use it, uh, you could also do that using the server variable. But I just wanted to do this just to show you sort of uh, how the uh, IOC bindings work and that we can also um, add our own bindings to it. Um, by the way, the HTTP host could also be accessed in different ways in your application. You could do like request server HTTP host that would work as well um, so basically we're just we're just parsing that HTTP host which is going to be something like um, freightform.com and then I just uh, we're exploding that and I just want to return the front part which is freightform and if it was another site another of the leads implementations like recyclingleads.com then we're just returning recycling leads now the weird stuff here about PHP sappy name, the reason why I have this here is because um, if I'm running something like PHP artisan routes uh, from the command line, um, when you run uh, when you run PHP from the command line, it doesn't have access um, to the server variable, so it's actually going to throw undefined index errors. Um, so what I've done here is sort of a hack. And basically, I'm checking if uh, basically if this script is being run from the command line, then I'm just going to return freight forum right away in order to uh, avoid that error being thrown. So supposing that the users requested freightform.com, uh, freightform is going to be returned here. It's going to be passed into the switch statement right here. And if it was freight forum, then we're just going to return freight. Okay, actually, we're not going to return freight. Freight is going to be set onto this leads app ID, and then I'm just going to return uh, to get, just to get out of this function. So the return part is not important right here. What's important is that we're setting 
um, something to this leads property here. App ID is now being set to freight. And if it was the recycling one, then recycle is going to be set here. And any other um, implement implementations that we have. So you can see that what's happening in both of these functions here is we're just preparing um, an array uh, that we are going to that we're going to bind uh, to the IOC container. You could you could bind other things. You could bind an object or something else, but in this case, I'm going to bind an array to it. Now, in the next function, get lead types. Um, what's happening here is um, if we're dealing with the freight website. Then we're going to return, uh, we're going to, again, we're going to bind to this lead types this time, the different kinds of lead types that there is. And if it was, um, if it was the, uh, I think there's a little mistake right here. This should be uh, recycle. Yeah, that should be recycle. So if it's the recycle one, then we're going to return um, this array of these different lead types. Now, the reason why I need to um, bind these to my types array right here is because within my routes file um, we're going to create these route, routes dynamically so rather than me do like some huge if else within this routes file is it the freight website is it the recycle website what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the lead types here um, from our binding in the IOC container and then we're going to um, create these routes dynamically and I think if we go over to our um, command line interface, I think this should work now. PHP artisan routes, and oh, sorry, I'm I'm dumping something first. Let's uh, let's comment this out first right here, and let's run that again. And you can see our different routes here. So um, these routes are they're going to change based on what's the URL string, and you know that's kind of the whole point of what we're doing. So just going back over to the service provider here. So you've seen we've prepared two things in our array so far, the app ID and the types. And this has both been set onto our leads array right here. And the final thing we do is we bind them to the IOC container. This app singleton and our index is going to be leads. So um, what we're doing is going to be accessible like app leads. It's also going to be accessible like app uh, at make leads okay and um, we're binding that right here so the second argument is a closure and then we would re just return this leads so over in the routes file right here um, you'll see what I'm doing is I'm just dumping this uh, so you can see it um, you can put some if you don't put a pre tags in front of it it's gonna be hard to see in the browser um, so let's go over to the browser here and so on our recycling ones here, you'll see this is um, what we've bound. We have the app ID and the types. We have all the recycling stuff there. And then if we go over to the freight one, you'll see we have freight there and the different freight lanes.